Hello folks. I don't know if anybody's watching us, but hello and welcome to Theorycraft. Us lot are Ben and that's Jack. I keep doing this the wrong way around every bloody week, oh. but there we go. So Jack's over there and we are two biggish nerds, as you may or may not know, who like to rant about everything sci-fi, comic book or just pure geekiness. This week is a topic that I'd like to go over, which is Power Rangers. Now, for most of you, you may remember, or even still watch it now, as a Saturday TV series for kids who basically gain incredible powers through some other entity and somehow gain transforming vehicle slash animal based things that could turn into a mighty <coughs> robot and fight the big bad, Big Whoop. But this isn't the normal Power Rangers we're talking about. This is the god-awful, gritty, and I say gritty because that's all they actually ended up doing. Even Jack can see how bad I'm trying to sell this. The 2017 yeah, Power Rangers I, movie. I don't care how good it is, Ben. You're not going to sell this thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I... I personally absolutely hate the film like i've seen clips i it was so bad watching the clips that it put me off watching it and i love power rangers because it was the staple of my saturday mornings as a kid just watching utter randomness but seeing these amazing mechanized weaponry and all this yeah, bow, but, bow, boom. yeah but to be honest despite all the over-the-top explosions the over-the-top acting all the grunts groans and so on the swords that clearly somebody in a suit which is painted cardboard yeah but still regardless i love it and i still love it and i still watch some of them today <laughs> i mean it's best part of 30 years old give or take so it's been around for a long, long time, and there has been so many iterations, but it's very rare that, of course, many actors have come back to play the same role. Yeah. I think there's only been one actor in the entire saga who's actually played multiple different Rangers. But the 2017 movie, I seriously don't know who in Bandai came up with it because it's so disjointed from what I imagine as a kid that I struggle to understand what the absolute fudge they were trying to do. <laughs> I mean, case in point, let's start off with the suits. Now, everybody also already knows, of course, that the Power Ranger suits in themselves are just pure cringe. It's literally a leotard with foam added on and a very odd-looking biker's helmet. It, but, it looks like the looks like the morph suits that you get on eBay for Halloween. Pretty much. But at the end of the day, it was a TV show, so they were low budget. They had to make do with what they got. Yeah. But how the hell did a movie that had quite a lot of budget fluff up so bad with these suits? Like at the end of the day, I understand that obviously not everything's going to be perfect and there's going to be a lot of things that may and this or may not. definitely wasn't. <laughs> oh, God almighty. Like, I just, I look at these suits and I just shudder to think as to who thought they were a good idea. I mean, let's see. Can I even, I think I may be able to zoom in. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. So... Obviously, they were trying to go for the original idea where it was like a white diamond, colour, white diamond, so on, like to give it the original concept. But, like, I mean, you look at what, it. And... I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, very, very first thing, just to make this easier, say if, even if you just saw these for the first time, but just looking at these, Ben, like, first impression, what do you think? I just think it looks god awful. Like, it just looks so bad. I mean, Do you know it's what it got... reminds me of? It Go reminds on. Me, I think it was in 2017 or 2016. Um, but do you, do you remember the um, the reboot of RoboCop? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, I watched that. Like. But they were trying to stay close to the idea, but then modernise it. And it like, the problem is, is like you can modernise some stuff. It does work. But there are some things that just do not work whatsoever. 
for me, it kind of reminds me of the problem they had in Green Lantern that had Ryan Reynolds. The fact that it's all pure CGI, that there was no need for it. Like, the whole point of these suits is that it's meant to be an actual suit. It's not a construct. Like, it's body armour. Like, you can tell in the design they're trying to bulk it up. Yeah. But, like, it just... (sighs) It just looks so bad. Like, I don't understand. Like in the chess pieces, like there's flowing energy. What was the point of that? And then let's see. Can I zoom in even further? So you see on the Red Ranger, there's that weird piece in the middle that looks like an eye. Yeah, that's meant to be the morpher. Why is Why? there morph? Why would you have it just above the like? certain area like it just I mean, you look at it as well and there's like loads of random lines on it it makes the suit look like it's got veins yeah i know i understand but you remember like obviously everybody else was watched power rangers when um they did the whole morphing thing or like it's morphing time or yes. you know whatever was what was said because for some reason those poses and everything for some reason makes the morphing happen but don't matter but anyway you like when they did the whole morphing, the morphers, it like it was never explained where the morphers went. Did they go into a pocket? Did they just disappear? What happens? But yeah, you know, I mean, but I understand that they kind of want to um take the morpher, maybe kind of have it be a signature piece of the suit, but at the same time, there's a lot of things with that have stayed consistent with Power Rangers, despite them being different stories, different zords, and different themes, and so on. But there's some things which you can't really change with power rangers you can't go no. too far away from what we know and what fans and us are going to accept no i mean this is exactly it i mean i want to s- sort of pick your brains on what you think of the this concept art or fan art that i found somebody had done on the suits like they haven't done all the characters they've only done three of them but in my opinion it looks a lot more realistic as like a modern version of Power Rangers compared to the previous one. Um, this I find is a bit more, if acceptable is the right word, but I don't know. I just find that these suits, did you say they were fan art or are they the film concept art? I think it's meant to be fan art based on like slash concept art. So it was just a bit iffy. So there's no confirmation on this. But at least with this, you can tell that they still got the face of whatever Zord that they own. Like, you've got the Triceratops, the T-Rex, and the Cheetah, or the, um, what was the Yellow Rangers? Sabretooth. So, at least you can get a rough idea that it's still animal-based. But on the other one, it just looked like they just kept adding more and more to make it more edgy, to the point where... It it just looks so over the top. Uh, it just it just looks too far removed from like what we see. I mean, even in the nineteen ninety five film when you had the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, yeah, 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 and all of that when you had the suits which were kind of a bit more, um, I don't know, a bit more sort armored, of enhanced, I suppose, from like the series. But then again, like the suits, it was so close to what we already knew, and what we already saw in Mighty Morphin that. I found the suits in that film when I watched a few clips earlier on today that they're a bit more, it's more, a bit more acceptable as yes. you can, even though a lot has changed, you can tell exactly what it is. You can tell who each one of them are, who each one of their swords is, what they're trying to represent. Like for me, that's much more acceptable for that film. But with this film, it just kind of steered so far away from it that it looks like a mixture of Robocop and motorbike protection. Yes, pretty much. I mean, the thing, the biggest issue I had with the entire film, as I said earlier, I've not watched it because it was such a letdown, but I've watched a few clips. You don't need to. But like, you spend at least 80% of the movie following these kids, and then it's like the last five, ten minutes of the movie that they actually have the Zords, the suits, and actually fight. Now, I understand, obviously, that they had to try and fill in some gaps and they had to try and build a group of friends. That's fair enough. Yeah. But my analogy of this film is the fact that it's like a sci-fi version of The Breakfast Club. It's basically... 
But it's pretty much like it was a misfit tag team of kids that had all been put in detention and they somehow form a team out of that. But yeah. in the original series, they were already pre-existing friends. The reason why they became a team was because they were so unique and so unison. That's why Zordon chose them. Yes. But in the film, I think he literally says it that he had no other option. He had to choose these guys, which just sounds <laughs> such... But it sounds so lazy, that writing. It's like, ah, sod it's just it. So out, it's just so out of touch from what we know and what we've accepted. Exactly, like... It's like Zordon basically going, well, there's all these like firemen and there's all these courageous people that go off to war. I won't choose them. I'll choose these annoying little kids that can't get along Rats. for five years. Like... Yeah. But like, it's such a weird inconsistency for the whole, <laughs> the whole point of Power Rangers is that you're supposed to have the premise that you that you're stronger together as a unit, as a friends, like as a whole group. That's the whole point of Power Rangers. Yeah. So then when you just add into the mix, ah, we just, we threw you in together because you're all in detention and you were the best I could do despite everything else. Yeah, basically, people were sort on, which is basically quite lazy. <laughs> yes. I mean, the other big issue is... I really don't get how the Zords came about. Like, the the Zords themselves, it looked like they basically just mechanised the bone structure of all the creatures instead of actually making, like, a mechanised version of the creature. Well, yeah, whereas you had, like, you had the, um, the original, uh, like, the promo pictures for the film when you had the posters, and you had that, image of like the first kind of image we saw of the Zords. I think it's early on, like yes. way before the film actually came out. But that thing actually, even though it does it's gonna look goofy regardless so that you know you're not gonna change that. But no. All the Zord all the Zords from obviously you have to give them a little bit of a modern twist. You know, it has to be able to work kind of more in the real world in the times that we live in. But whereas from the comparisons from the original series right the way to the uh, the most current film, it looks exactly like it's. Well, it looks like it's meant to look. You can tell what each one of the Zords is. But I with mean, this the... one, you struggle. Yeah, I mean, it's like case in point. What was the Black Rangers meant to be? It was what the Mammoth. That's what it is. That's meant to be the Black Rangers, like. Zord. It looks more like a dung beetle to me. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Like I struggle to try and comprehend what they were trying to go for with this. That does not look like a mammoth. No. Whatever. I mean, more to the point, like, why is it got, unless I'm counting wrong, it looks like it's got given six legs. I, yeah, I can, I've counted it does have six legs. But a mammoth doesn't have six legs. No animal has six legs. Well, other than insects. Unless you're but... an octopus or a squid. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, this is what I mean. Like, it just looks so far-fetched. It, like it, it looks more like it belongs in maybe Transformers or Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I mean, let's have a look. Um, I mean, we got another one here. Let's have a look. There's the Blue Rangers one, which was the Triceratops. I can almost see it because of the like face of it, but other than that, yeah, the... I know. But it just looks so far from what it is that it's hard to even tell. Unless you're an actual fan of the like Power Ranger universe, you wouldn't even know what it was meant to be based on. No, like, I mean, the worst one of all, in my opinion, is the T Rex. Okay. Like, to me, it looks like a mutant version of the T-Rex. It just looks terrible. Like, it's like someone went to Jurassic Park and decided it needs more arms and added more arms onto it. I, just... I hate these swords. I hate So do I. It's so terrible. Like, it's unbelievable again it looks like it belongs in transformers not power rangers but this is it like it's almost like a really gritty version of beast wars which is an entirely different version of 
and Transformers in itself. But all looks like all looks like um, Robot Wars on performance enhancers. <laughs> It's Robot Wars slash Jurassic Park. But uh, Robot, like, yeah, Robot Wars with a bigger budget. <laughs> yes, yeah, pretty much. But this is concept art of what the Black Ranger Zord could be like. Now that actually looks pretty decent. Like it's still got the animalistic version of the mammoth, but it looks like a tank. But right like, away, I can tell what it is. Yeah, this is it. Like it looks like a tank, but it's still a mammoth. Like but the only thing I would have, I would change about that is I would have the opposite. I would have the thing more blue than silver. Well, I mean, the black is Black Ranger, so I, they did have a major obsession with blue in the entire Power Ranger movie because it was meant to show energy. Why not just use yeah. white? Like you didn't have to do dark blue. Like you could easily just do white, and then it would show up on all of them clearly. And it would tie into the original concept of Power Rangers, which was it was a colour and white. Like, it wasn't just the yeah. colour. But... <sighs> the thing that I couldn't get my head around, and I still can't get around it, was how all those clunky Zords end up being transformed into a Megazord that looked so far different to what the Zords were original, that it looked, it just looked so bizarre. Like, it just made no sense to me, in my opinion, that while I understand that they were trying to make it sleeker or whatever, I, I can't see where any Zord went to anywhere. It just, like, you look at it, and it's obvious that it just looks so bizarre. Like, the Pink Ranger's original sword was a pterodactyl, and it obviously folded up and went into the chest. And the chest was the mammoth piece, and then you had one leg was the um, saber tooth, and then the other leg well, was the, the other leg was the triceratops. The other leg the... Yeah, because then the be the main torso was the T Rex. That was the whole yeah, point. And look, and the yeah, end, like you had also the right arm, which was the T Rex. Yeah. But, yeah, which is where, what you have in the original uh, promo poster as well, which is looks so much better than this piece of whatever. <laughs> well, the thing that I found stupid was that the pterodactyl wings didn't even fold. Look at the wings. Like, they don't even fold properly. And the only use that they have is that they make shift into a very, very clunky version of two swords. That's it. Like, there's no mammoth shield. Because in the original Power Rangers, the mammoth was the sh sword and shield. That was the point. Yeah. But, oh, Christ, on a bike we are on one today, I know. The, have you got a picture of the promo art? I do have something of a concept art or promo art that I think someone had done as fan art on the original yeah, the one. Trailer. Do that. I think this is fan art that I found. Now that but personally, I'm I'm this, super happy with this. This is the point. This is what a Zord is supposed to be. Like it's an amalgamation yes. of everybody, but they actually have their consistent pieces. Like you have the mammoth as a shield. You have the Zord there. You have a foot. You have a foot. You have a fist. You have a chest. It actually looks pretty badass. Yeah. Like it looks. So brilliant. Like, it's still sleek, but it looks like it's part of different pieces instead of it just being all melded into one thing. Yeah, and import importantly, you can tell where each piece goes. Exactly. Like, that's why I can't get my head around any of the co any of the actual designs that they did for the film. I mean, it just... Like, case in point, right, there is an artist that I found today who'd done some fan art slash concept art of what the Zords should look like, okay? Yeah. So let's have a look at... This is the pterodactyl. Now, that looks absolutely brilliant. Like, you can tell it's meant to fly, but it still has this look of being a pterodactyl as well as whatever else it's supposed to be. Yeah. There you go. 
So it still looks like it's an individual piece, but you can tell obviously later on it would become something else. Yeah, I can tell what these things are. It's easy. Yeah, exactly. Like it's not a guessing game as to what it is and what it does. It actually looks like what it's supposed to be. Like T Rex. That I think looks so much better than what we got. Like it just yeah, looks... that like, I could tell what all these then these things are really satisfying to look at. Yeah, this is it. Like I I don't understand how any film or any like concept art always gets drastically changed towards the end, other than the fact that someone obviously higher up went, ah, we don't have the budget for that, you have to rework it. That's literally the only reason. Yes, because they spent much of the budget on the suits. Oh, God. <laughs> Bloody hell. But we've not even got to the worst bit yet. Now, in the original Mighty Morphin, I hated this character with an absolute passion because it was the most irritating character that they had. I don't even understand his function other than just being the most whiny-ass character, the most pathetic hey, character, hey, 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 hey. and the most <laughs> useless character was Alpha 5. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. But he sounded Mexican. I know it sounds racist, <laughs> but every time he went, ay, 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 I just thought, Arriba! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> but like, I just I look at this and it looks like Alpha 5 has ended up with a drinking problem like he's got a beer no, belly kill it. Kill it. he's got a beer belly like it's a I robot thing so much but the worst bit and I said to you the other day his head Almost looks like a really, really bad version of the Enterprise from Star Trek. It does, doesn't it? Like, I don't even understand why the like at least it's meant to be a robot, but it's like, what's with the eyes? Like Alpha yeah, Five what's never. The eyes and what's with the what's with the beer belly? Yeah, it's just I don't know. It it's almost like they modelled it after an orangutan, and then they thought, ah, oh, we're out of sombrero and two headlights. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like the arms are really long yeah. arms. They like they don't look right. Nothing looks right. I mean, if you look really yeah, carefully, just, yeah, just cool. It almost looks like they're trying to give him a six pack, but they failed. Like there's all those like oh, yeah, I can see that now. like <laughs> <laughs> it's just I just don't get it. Like how did anybody at Bandai approve? any of this and thought sod it this will do didn't but, they have anybody like on for that film like even a producer or whatever who had any kind of connection to mighty morphin to the series i don't itself? know i don't know i mean i'm for, by the looks of this film i'm guessing no they didn't have anybody to steer them in the right direction no i mean obviously this is the original alpha five it was clunky you could tell it was obviously a person just wearing like body armor. Despite, like, from... despite how despite how bloody annoying this is, I will pick this over the other one. Well, at least with this one, it was meant to be a robot and it looked okay for the time. But I just can't get the difference between what we got and what it used to be. Like it looked like the modern day version had a midlife crisis. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> yeah, or it all had some kind of relationship with E.T. No, behave. <laughs> yeah, that, I'm only saying that much because I don't want to get struck down because no. I've got to be careful what I say. <laughs> no, of course. But, <sighs> but I yeah, think when it comes to other things as well, like you have Zordon, which is a very, which is not. Very hard to mess up. But how do you reckon they did with Zordon? Brian Cranston, whole like sword, sword hologrammy, staticky thing. See that in itself made some reasonable sense because yeah, I mean Zordon was a very distant character in the entire saga of the Power Rangers. That I don't think they even know his true origin, other than the fact that he was someone that was trying to seek 
the ultimate good to go against the ultimate evil, which was fair enough. Yeah. But looking at the like scenes that I saw where you got Brian Cranston in blue, obviously he's trying to be alien. That's fair enough. Why is he naked? I never got that. I never got that. That why is he naked? Because <laughs> when you watch the scene, obviously he was the first pa- he was the first Red Ranger, and then when he took the morphing thing off, it came off, and he wasn't wearing. Why wasn't he wearing anything? I don't care if it was six billion years ago. If he's from a race of aliens that's advanced enough to understand how to morph into stuff on the morphing grid. They must be capable of making their own sodding clothes. Like it's, <laughs> it doesn't take a rocket scientist to sew clothing or whatever. Like it's just but the thing is, it's like in that scene, right? He starts speaking a completely different language. But when he meets the teenagers, he's somehow able to understand them. Like he speaks fluent English. Yeah, see, this is what I, I... There's so many inconsistencies with this film that I think the only thing that they managed to do right was the fact that they actually had a fight with the Zords and they blew up half the town, and that was about it. <laughs> yeah, but then again, I had the same thing with that with a horrible reboot of Fantastic Four had about an hour and a bit's worth of just crap with only five minutes of actual action. Yeah, I mean, I hope that they learn from their lesson and they actually do a proper reboot. I think the idea of Brian Cranston as Zordon fits well, because yeah. not many people know, but the original, well, in the original series, you had the Putty Man, which was like the generic bad guys. And one of those was actually played by Brian Cranston. That's how he came about becoming Zordon. But, see, that's actually one thing I did like in the new movies, was that they made the Putty Men a bit more of an interesting threat, that they were actually, like, mishmash monsters that were trying to actually attack people. Yeah, but who did we get as the main antagonist? Uh, Rita Repulsa. <laughs> <laughs> I her right. Let me just see if I I couldn't fathom how they went from one to the other. Obviously, in the original series, she was a proper bad guy who was locked in the moon, and she got released because of some idiot astronauts. That was literally the whole reason why Power Rangers came about, which I I find hilarious. But we then somehow end up getting something so different that my brain hurts trying to figure out where they went wrong. There's original Rita Repulsa and obviously like they'd have to try and make it look like she was a witch of sorts in the newer one. Like, it's quite baggy clothing so there's no way they could actually do as much as this for the newer film. No. But this is where it all went to poop. And I say poop because the real word that I want to say, I might get flagged for. So, right. So, this is the Rita Repulsa that we ended up with. What the absolute fudge! Bugger off! Like they explained in the they explained in the film that she was the Green Ranger. But this is where my brain hurts, okay? So the point of the suits was that they're meant to be indestructible and they're supposed to sustain them, they're meant to keep them safe, whatever. How? How is it that her suit is broken? Because she's still wearing it now. That was the whole thing that that was all about. She was trying to get all the different gems so she could have all the Zords for herself. But she has the exact same issue that Zordon had, that she was naked underneath. So what the fudge? Like... <laughs> because sex appeal, I guess? <laughs> it's just, I don't know, It's there were so many things that they just went so, so far left from. I, that... I've kind of scrubbed the film from my mind. I can't yeah. even remember if um, Lord Zed was in it. 
No. No, they were planning on using him as a sequel, but I think the movie had flopped so hard that it's ended up being that they may end up rebooting it completely. Yeah, because I think like even afterwards they went to great lengths to they went to great lengths to scrub this film out. <laughs> I mean, I just feel sorry for all the actors that have been known as part of the Rangers in the like its history that they actually get tied to this shenanigans. And I say shenanigans because I want to say another word but can't. Um it's just it's so bad. Like I just can't fathom how they could get so disjointed from the original story of it, like any of the Power Ranger lore or whatever. Like it's it's so weird. This is why when you had guys like Stanley that were doing Marvel and so on, you had people working on the films yes. where they could steer you in the proper creative direction. Whereas with this film, I don't think they did at all. No. I mean, the last thing that I want to cover briefly as to what the old and the new is yeah, how the morphers look. So the morphers were obviously the original ones were quite clunky. They were supposed to be belt loop. Like doing like um belt uh da, 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 da. they're basically meant to be on sat on the belt and go from there. Yeah. So like at least with this, you could easily see it as a belt buckle and nobody would be the wiser. Like Yeah, it, I love these things. Same. Like at least they had some purpose and they actually like disconnected it. It was almost like the old style police thing where you had it on a holster and you'd literally click it off and but the issue I have with the modern ones is it just it looks so bizarre. This is only based on the toy that they have of it, but it's not far off what we got in the film. Like, what on earth was that? <laughs> like, like, this is of this is only the toy version of it, but like, what on earth was What's this? The point? But like it's it's huge. Like it'd be literally covering my entire face. How the hell do you hide that from the public? The these things, do you know what they remind me of? Do you remember a series with Jackie Chan? I can't remember what it was called. Yes, it was where he had the talismans. Yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it reminded me of. <laughs> yeah, it was it was called The Adventures of Jackie Chan. That's all it was. Um <laughs> but no, no, I that's what I kind of think of it as well. It's like the many talismans. But I even when you look at these coins, you can barely tell what they're supposed to be. Like you can't you can't even see on the yellow one. You can just about see it on the red one. The pink one is the only one that you can actually see the full details. Like the black one is from a distance, it just looks like a cloud of smoke. And then well, the... I, thought, I thought they were trying to go for the idea because originally, like looking at this, I don't know why it's reminding me of it, but it looked like they're trying to go for the idea. Of, do you remember in Power Rangers Spark Force where they had the little crystals, where they had the the spheres with their little zords inside? Yeah, 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 yeah. In the daggers and they, you know, that yeah. thing, it sort of reminds me of that's the kind of look they were trying to go for. Yeah, I can kind of get that they're trying to crystallize it in some way, but it just doesn't work it, it's more to the device that's meant to be the morpher that throws me off because I can't remember in the film if it actually came with a lever where you had to literally like and do that no I don't remember it ever coming with a lever no so I just I'm trying to picture like how the hell do you activate this morpher because it just looks so yeah. It it looks like it's been fished out of a tar pit. It's not satisfying to look at, that's all no. I can say. No. But the thing is, there are so many things that I'd love to rewrite about it. And I think oh, the yeah. big the main thing is that I'd want to try and make it so that they were already friends, so you didn't spend half the movie trying to make them into friends. The second thing is I'd actually like to see them do training together properly as, like, you could see 
perhaps in the cave that becomes the base as well, all the Zords are already there and they have to make form a bond with the Zords like they used to in the original series. Because at least then, it gives it a bit more gravitas as to, uh, it's not just anybody can be a Power Ranger. You have to build an actual bond. Yeah. But the other thing as well is the base that they... You could tell that they'd run out of budget in this movie when it came to seeing them in the base. Like, Batman's got more convincing base and he literally lives in a cave. But what they did in this one was they, they tried to make it out like the cave was part of the ship, but it was also still a cave. Well, it's not a cave then. No, no, that's what I couldn't fathom. Like, Because the thing is, how did... Unless they got Jedi mind tricks where they can literally go, this is not the Power Ranger base you are looking for. That doesn't like stop anybody coming in or out. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it's just such a weird design flaw to basically be a cave and that's it. I mean, I do like the idea that Zordon was the reason that the meteorite came to Earth and that created the dinosaurs being wiped out. That I would keep in the film because it'd be just an interesting concept. Yeah. But see, I would do it in a sense that he wasn't on Earth at the time. They'd be on the moon, and he'd end up in trapping Rita Repulsa on the moon. And in his last ditch effort on this last bit of life, that's when Alpha Five uploads him to the computer. So then you yeah. get the AI version of Zordon. That makes a bit more sense because I don't think they even explained it much in the film how he became what he is. I don't think they explained it at all. No. I think they just said he was just a cosmic being. Yes, which is a lot of... Well... Fudge. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, Find your words. Yeah. But it's just such a bad excuse just to say, oh, he's a cosmic being. Well, if he's a cosmic being, why can't he whip her ass? Like, it's... <laughs> that's I a mean, fair point. It's just like. So, like I say, we could easily rewrite the movie so they're already friends. There's no trying to build them into a team. What would you add to the film to try and rewrite it? Well, definitely, like, when you had, um, which was greatly, like, it was put over hard in the original series and in the 995 film when, you know, they're all established friends. They already know each other. They've already done stuff together. So, you know, you got to keep, you know, keep that for sure. You know, because that or, already that trims out at least an hour's worth of the film itself already. Yes. Exactly. Like, yes, that already trims out like the film. I mean, you can obviously you can still go through the whole bonding process with the Zords because, again, if they're animals, that makes sense because you have mm. to bond with them anyway in real life, which makes sense. Yes. But for Zordon, I would definitely have him be a bit more, a bit more than what we got. It seemed like he was just like an extra in his own, yeah. in like his own film, basically. I mean. I know it sounds a really odd idea, but they could easily do hints towards the, like, everything Power Rangers, the entire morphing grid. They could easily show, like, the different symbols that there are of all these different Rangers. So you could flash up, like, the Wild Force lot or the Mystic Force or whatever. So, because I don't think they fully explained what the morphing grid was, other than the fact that it was the source of how they actually get everything to work to be honest to be honest with um like because it's primarily my base around the whole kind of subject and everything in space you know where zordon came from and then, yes like Rita repulsive being trapped on the moon and so on so i would have even if they're just little easter eggs maybe in the uh with the morphing grid or even in the cave itself have some little easter eggs to maybe things such as you know space ones like uh uh what are they call Lost Power Galaxy. Galaxy you, could, Galaxy, you could have the alien uh, Power Rangers, even if they're just little Easter eggs. And even yes. you could have Time Force in there somewhere as well. Why not just have a bit of fun? You know, have some, a bit of a nostalgia trip, like for yes. us fans. This is it. Like, at least then it opens the doors for later on, where you could basically say that the first Power Ranger team can't access it. 
and thus they have to use the next generation, but it has to be someone else to be part of the team because it's a whole new saga of whatever. Yeah, because you can even have like you can even have Zordon having a conversation with all these guys. Obviously, they all know each other, but they haven't become the Power Rangers yet. Mm-hmm. So um, you could even you could even say like them being like even all the friends being a little bit like you know Zordon, why did you want to, Why did you choose us? Why didn't you have anybody else do this? And he could just say, well, the like, thing is, there already has there already has been other Power Rangers. You're just more or something like that you know you're just the so next like generation to obviously to a throwback to obviously oh there's been other power rangers not just us yes i mean it just seems such a shame that they had such high hopes for this movie and yet they just flopped so bad but like, even you have to have in this film if we're going to reboot it again you have to have a tommy cameo oh so yeah least. definitely you have to I- I mean, you could, and I know it sounds really, really odd to choose it, but you could have him be the teacher in a martial arts school as a brief cameo, because he is a black belt in quite a few different martial arts, I think. But um, Yeah, definitely quite a few. (laughs) So it would be quite a good, decent cameo to have him in as just like a martial arts teacher. Um, I don't know who in terms I would cast for rebooting it at all because the thing, the actors that they chose were already nobodies and I understand that it can be quite expensive to try and get some well-known actors to play the part but the thing is if you're going to get Power Rangers off the ground from it just being a child TV series slash movie you have to bring in the big guns of in terms of like actors. You can't skip out because when I watched the like scenes with all these kid actors that did it in the movie, you could tell that they just didn't have any like click or whatever with one another. It just seems like, so yeah, awkward. Yeah, you could, yeah, I was going to mention this. You could tell like in all the scenes they have no chemistry whatsoever. No, like, they just they don't work together. <laughs> I mean, there's a scene, I think, where Pink Ranger and Red Ranger try to kiss as they're at a waterfall and then they get sucked into like the cave. But even in that scene, that felt forced because I don't think they ever pushed the idea of any of them having a relationship with one another in an entire series. That was never going to happen. They're friends. That well, this it. is it. But this is it. I mean, I still think that there's a lot of things that they could rework. But oh, I yeah, think yeah. as a great like nod to the original Blue Ranger, God rest his soul, they could make the Blue Ranger gay because he was a great guy for what he did. And it was a shame that during um, the time of... Obviously, it's a shame like, for his acting career and everything. And like, unfortunately, he, like, he did take his own life, didn't he? Yes, he did. I'm not going to say the other word because... No. Yeah, YouTube doesn't like that word. No. So we're just so we're just gonna say he passed away through his own means. But yes. you know, I just feel like from all that trouble that he went from all that trouble he went through in his real life and obviously being the Blue Ranger and having to deal with that and obviously why his life came to an end. Um, it would be su- it'd be such a touching tribute to have the Blue Ranger like you said, it'd be a touching tribute to have the Blue Ranger be gay, you know. So, exactly. And, you know, so just like so, then it's kind of like it's paying tribute to you know the fallen blue original Blue Ranger. Exactly. I mean, while I'm sure some people would probably disagree with me on this, I still think that they they should make a bit more of a try when it came to ethnicity. I mean, obviously with the original series it was a bit iffy with which colors were what yeah, and i yeah, said the, yeah, yeah 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 wasn't it the black guy the black ranger yeah the um the more yeah. yellow Asian one woman who was yes. the yellow ranger yes and i know obviously they can't keep to that per se for the film because they may be labeled racist or whatever and um, Especially in the times that we live in, it just wouldn't be you wouldn't be able to get away with that very easy. No, but at least they could bring in some diversity, and they because there wasn't much. I think they only had the black actor that was the Blue Ranger, 
and that was it. Like the rest of them were either Caucasian or I think the Yellow Ranger was Hispanic, or was it the pink one? Uh, no, I think the pink one. I think. Yeah. So I could be wrong, but there's not. There wasn't much diversity. So no. I know it sounds a bit of a random choice, but I would say put the black, place the black actor as the Red Ranger to probably voice the idea of a black a black actor being the lead role, because it's very rare that actually happens unless it's actually a black movie. Yeah, because I mean, when we had like kind of, like it was nice to see like even when you had guys like Blade who was like yes. the main actor for his own film, you had uh, Black Panther as well. So it's just kind of nice to ju it's just kind of nice to tip it on its head and just go, you know, just kind of like include uh, include everybody in this whole sorry to make not one Ranger feel was more important than the other ones. You know, have them all kind of on the same equal level. Exactly. I mean. The the other big thing that I found really bizarre was they decided to make Goldar Rita's Zord. Now Goldar was some other character entirely. He was a henchman, and it was more as comic relief than anything else. But I just I I couldn't understand the point. Like that, I really. Because the worst part of it all is like when she actually finally builds the like whole gold uh, sword, I swear, and I'll probably get a bit of an iffy look from you in a moment. When she gets absorbed into the gold, I swear she has like a face that she looks a bit. <sighs> yes, like I can't say the proper word because either Twitch or YouTube may be a bit <clears throat> about it. Yeah, but you but know what you, I mean. Yeah, you lot watching, you can guess. It begins with a no. But <laughs> but my point being, like, what was the point? Like, I could I still couldn't understand what was the <laughs> point. The scene now. <laughs> but I couldn't understand what was the point of all the gold being made into that Zord. Because I I think the weird thing in that film was that they were saying that the if she took all the gold from the planet, somehow the planet would like destabilize or something. I swear it was something along those lines. That's why they had to fight her because otherwise they would have just let her do what she needed to do. Yeah, but interesting fact is that gold doesn't even originate from Earth anyway. Apparently, gold was found from a a meteorite like y long long time ago so gold doesn't even naturally form on earth so by that yeah. logic it wouldn't have any issues with the planet whatsoever and she should have just gone off gone off and that would be it yeah apart from, <laughs> apart from you're gonna have like wedding rings being snatched off people's fingers <laughs> <laughs> no that's sonic that's sonic <laughs> touche Oh dear, but I I don't think there's anything else we can add to this for this week. I mean, at the end of the day, it was a it was an attempt. I'm not saying it was a good attempt, but it was an attempt that they tried, attempt nonetheless. And who knows? We may get something new one day. We may get it rebooted, or it might come out with a sequel. But I just hope to God that they redesign everything <laughs> because there was nothing about the CGI that looked at all good. Like there was nothing about no. it that was worth the time. And at the end of the day, it wasted everyone's time at the movies. I don't think it even made that much money. I think it lost more money than it made. Well, yeah. <laughs> but. And this whole you want... thing is going to have to be completely... The whole film's going to have to be scrapped and completely rebooted. You cannot do a sequel to this monstrosity. No, no. I mean, unless you can think of anything else to add, I think we can wrap up. No, I think I'm going to need to indulge in my burgeoning drinking problem now after this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm joking. 
No, uh, no. But it's, it's been fun to like talk about this. I know we've been wanting to. I know mean, you've been wanting to talk about this for quite a while, actually. Yes. So well, hopefully. Oh yeah, the shirt. <laughs> this is my custom-made T-shirt that I designed based on the 25th anniversary, but. Yeah, it was a subject I wanted to take over for a long, long time because it still amazes me that Bandai even attempted to try and screw it over and they did successfully screw it over. Uh -huh. But this has been it this week, folks. It's been a bit of a short and sweet episode and we should get some more content soon. He is going to come up with some ideas. I'm going to come up with some ideas. And between the two of us, We'll see what we can do. So stay safe, everybody, and we'll catch you all soon.